Welcome to Just The Job, the show that gives you a behind the scenes insight into a huge range of exciting career opportunities. Now this week, we've got a special program looking at career opportunities driving these beauties. We start today's show deep in the forest as Mark from Wanganui City College checks out the skills required to be a top logging truck driver. Then Amanaki from Rosmini College discovers what's involved in transporting hazardous and non-hazardous waste material. Then Amanaki's fellow Rosmini student Nick Miller jumps in the cab as he checks out the special qualities required to drive oversized loads. So let's get started and join Mark in the forest in Tangiwai. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm Year 12 at Wanganui City College and I'm looking at a career in log transportation. In the shadow of Mount Ruapehu, the town of Oakune is famous for its big carrot, but also supports a thriving logging industry in the nearby Karioi Forest. And it's here that Mark is going to gain a unique insight into the big bold world of driving logging trucks with McCarthy Transport. G'day, g'day Mark, my name's Craig Gibbons, everyone calls me Gibbo. Gibbo is McCarthy Transport's training manager and he's been driving trucks okay. for quite a while. I've been driving since I'm 20 years old, so that's 30 and some years and it's, I've never thought about doing anything else. First up, Gibbo's going to show Mark just how high tech the modern trucking industry is. All of those that we will do today will be entered on the screen in front. The online real-time system allows the dispatchers to know the GPS coordinates and status of every truck in the fleet. That's pretty awesome. You can see where every truck is. Certainly, at all, at all times. That one there, we can see, is actually switched off. OK, Mark, let's go outside and we'll meet up with Michelle and her truck and we'll uh, start our day from there, eh? Hi, Michelle. Hi, This hello. is Mark. Hey, uh, Mark. How's it going? He's going to go with you for a couple of hours. Michelle Cooey is training to be a driver under McCarthy's cadetship program. After three to five years, the, the cadet that comes in is a fully qualified and safe driver that we're proud to put out on the road. Michelle hopes to eventually gain her Class 5 full licence, allowing her to drive a logging truck on public roads. All Michelle's training has been done on private roads that are not open to the public, which is why we can bring her on under supervision at a faster rate than if she was out in the, on public highway. So um, what do you like about the job? Just um, learning things. Well, each week I'm learning something new. Each week about driving, um, this is actually the first time I've had truck experience. Before she graduates to a logging truck, Michelle is training on a wood chip truck. Michelle and Mark's job this morning will be to onload a chip fill container from a nearby railway siding. First, they need to get the empty container off the truck. You normally get about eight rail bins, which would take about three and a half hours to do. Next, Michelle lines up her vehicle alongside the rail wagon then Mark gets a lesson on the winch. Straight up, down. And it's up to him to guide the 10 tonne container onto Michelle's truck. Not too bad for a beginner, but he still needs Michelle's help. Yeah, try and push that front around, otherwise it's putting it off centre. Yeah, it didn't feel too good. I thought it looked a bit easier, but it's harder than it looks. Michelle's got skill at it. She's done it more times than I have. It's a first time for everything. Um, she's all secure, ready to go, and we can go and unload it on the receiver. They will unload the truck at the nearby Winstone pulp mill. Like all of McCarthy Transport's cadets, Michelle is earning a wage while she's training. As they're earning, they're learning. There's no student loans involved in this. We pay full wages and they earn, we get paid for every hour that they're learning. The wood chips are now where they should be and Mark is ready for his next challenge. OK, Mark, uh, now you're going to go and have a chat with Richard from Mito and at our office. Mito is the New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation and works closely with companies like McCarthy's to support and enhance their training. Hey Mark. How's it going? Hi, I'm Richard Chapman and I'm an industry training advisor for Mito. Richard explains that Mark would be working towards qualifications called national certificates. Now there's four different stages of the pathway. I'll take you through. There's a bronze, silver, gold and a platinum. Once you've completed your silver, uh, you've completed your national certificate in transport of logs. By this time you should have um, completed your class 5 licence and then you, if you feel, you can move on to the gold or even to the platinum. Uh, then you'll be able to train up other drivers. So being a cadet here at McCarthy's, would that be suited for this 
National Law Certificate. Yeah, it'd be an ideal place to be um, getting practical experience here. And now it's time for some more practical experience. OK, Mark, I'd like you to meet Eric. He's going to take you into the bush and show you how to put on a load of logs. Eric came to us with a Class 1 licence and in the very near future will be progressing to Class 5 full. So he's gone through, he's almost at the end of his qualifications, but his experience will be ongoing. So what do you actually want to do as you, pro as you progress? I think in the office in the boss's seat. <laughs> one, one day, yeah, something like that. Yet for now, Eric's office is here in the heart of the forest, where a large stand of pine trees is being cut down and rapidly converted into stripped and debarked logs. Eric's truck is just as efficiently prepared for loading. So uh, what's happening with the, with the loading here? Oh, take about 10, 15 minutes to get loaded. And uh, we'll drive off the skid, chain up, and then, yeah, on our way to the mill. The essential part of the driver's work is the safety of his load and other road users from pickup point to delivery point. He's a, our safety man, he's our advertising out there on the road. Everything's got to be right. Eric and Mark are now at the Weybridge. With the weight entered into the tracking system and recorded back at the dispatch office, the job is almost complete. Finally, they head to the pulp mill for unloading. And after an action-packed introduction into logging transport, is this the job for Mark? Mark has done a very good job today and he's just the type of young man that we're looking for and we would be keen to have him on board as a cadet in the future. MITO facilitates training programs for the log transportation sector, including the National Certificate in Transportation of Logs by Road and the National Certificate in Commercial Road Transport Good Service Senior Driver Level 4. These programs are designed to teach the skills required to load a logging truck and trailer and operate vehicles involved in forestry operations. For more information, visit mito.org.nz. Well done, Mark. After the break, we discover more truck driving career options when we join Amanaki right here in Auckland. Welcome back to Just The Job. We're joining Amanaki now as he discovers what's involved in transporting hazardous goods and waste material in one of these huge trucks. Hello, my name is Amanaki Koro. I'm currently in year 12 at Rosamond College and I'm interested in careers with the transportation industry. MITO is the New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation. Among its many roles is facilitating training for automotive technicians and drivers over a wide range of transportation, including buses, couriers and taxis, plus logging, container and waste trucks. Today, Amanaki is going to get thrown in the deep end with a visit to leading Auckland trucking firm Smith & Davies, organised by MITO's manager corporate, Nick McGurr. G'day, Amanaki. Nick McGurr from MITO. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, Amanaki, I understand you're doing the startup program at school. How are you finding that? Um, yeah, I have started it. It's real fun. MITO's startup program gives students the chance to experience the motor industry and at the same time earn credits towards a national certificate. Well, look, hey, that's one of the areas that we look after the automotive. There's a whole lot of other areas that MITO looks after as well. Uh, one of them is around transportation and driving. Uh, in particular, um, what we're going to have a look at today is transportation of recoverable resources, um, which is liquid and hazardous waste, solid waste, all of those areas. Nick has arranged for Amanaki to spend the day at Smith & Davies. So here we are at Smith & Davies, Amanaki. Yep. Let's go and check it out. Okay. The first thing for Amanaki will be a health and safety induction. I'll just introduce you to Amanaki. Amanaki, this is Raywin Head. She's the compliance manager nice for Smith & Davies. Nice to meet you, Davies. Amanaki. And she's going to take you through a comprehensive health and safety induction. And I'll leave you in Raywin's capable hands. When you join Smith & Davies as a driver, you are required to um, undertake safe ed training. After a thorough briefing, okay. Raywin issues Amanaki with personal protection equipment. All right, I'm going to give you masks that you can wear during the day. Yep. Um, you're going out into a tip site. OK, Amanaki, now you've got all your gear on, I'd like to introduce you to Mick. Mick Giles is in charge of driver training for Smith & Davies. And the first thing he's going to show Amanaki is his big Mercedes. So we'll just um, show you around a couple of the trucks that we've got in the yard today. Um, there's not many trucks in, obviously all the trucks are out working today, so this is the ones we're going to be looking at. How many trucks do you have all up? 
So on the fleet, we've got 150 trucks thereabouts, um, predominantly Mercedes trucks, but we do have a few other brands and makes. So we were talking about health and safety earlier before, and um, depending on the job that we do, we may have to use these flip boards um, and flip them through, and then depending on the, the hazardous waste that we've got on, we'll utilise that. So are these on every truck you own? Not all, no, and it'll be specific tr trucks doing specific jobs, so depending on what job he's doing at the time. Uh, when it's not in use, it just gets folded away and has a nice drive safety sign on it. OK, Amanaki, this is the main workshop area. All vehicles will be serviced and repaired in this area. We have a close working relationship with Mito. We, um, we have guys going through national certificates, both on the trucks and in the workshop environment. We have uh, currently three apprentices in the workshop going through with Mito. Um, and as I say, we work very closely with them. This is going to be, we're going to be doing a load of rubbish on this truck. Um, so, obviously, the sheer size of it, to, you know, it's a pretty, um, pretty big truck. So, uh, driver needs a lot of skill to, to operate this size machinery. So, yeah, part of my role at Smith & Davies is that um, new drivers will come in and I'll buddy up with them and jump in the truck with them. We've currently got a scheme at the moment called um, a two to five cadetship, which means that we can bring people in on a class two license and get them up to the standard for the class five and then get their class five at the end of it. Like all of Smith and Davies trucks, this one has a security system deactivated by pin number. All the checks are all good, so I'll start it up, build the air up, and away we'll go. They're heading for West Auckland's Waitakere Waste Transfer Station, where they'll pick up a full load of rubbish, then deliver it to a North Shore landfill site. 20 minutes later, they're entering the transfer station. Here, Amanaki helped Mick to prepare the truck to receive the load by rolling off the tarp. Not as easy as it looks. And as it carries on over, you need to get towards the steps then to walk over with it. Amanaki's getting the hang of it. He's on a roll. And with the tarp now off, Mick drives the truck into the loading bay. This is where a large proportion of the million tonnes of Auckland's rubbish every year gets processed and loaded onto trucks for transfer to the region's landfills. OK, Amanaki, if you look up now and see the weight there, yep. if when that gets to around about 17 and a half tonne, Peter on the machine will give us a beep on the horn. Yep. We'll start up and we'll move forward, which will allow them then to fill the back of the trailer. Once the truck is fully loaded, they need to do some housekeeping before leaving. And what we do then, wait for Pete's signal to say we're OK to move further down. Okay. And what we've got to do is clean the top off with the brush. Yep. And then once all that's clean, we'll pull back out. Amanaki makes a clean sweep of the gantry, and then they're ready to go. Yeah, ideally, young people coming into the industry, they've obviously got to have a passion for, for big machines, big, big gear, you know. Um, obviously, dedication to the job. There's long hours on truck driving, so if they're keen on that sort of thing, it would work for them. There are many challenges, as Amanaki is about to find out. It's time to get up close and personal with the rubbish at the Red Vale landfill. That then makes the floor start going. See the floor? Oh, yeah. The truck floor is equipped with internal tracks, which pushes the rubbish out the back. Mick gives Amanaki the opportunity to operate the controls. Finally, all the rubbish is out. So, how has our prospective man behind the wheel done today? Yeah, Amanaki today has gone really well. He showed um, lots of interest in the job. So I found this experience to be brilliant. I learned a lot more about this side of the automotive industry. And I can see myself maybe doing this after school, maybe after I finish my mechanic side of everything that I'm doing right now. Mito facilitates training for the waste transportation sector, including the National Certificates in Transportation of Waste and Recoverable Resources, Solid Waste and Liquid and Hazardous Waste. These programs are designed to teach the skills required to load and operate heavy vehicles involved in the transportation of waste. For more information, visit mito.org.nz. Well done, Amanaki. More truck driving careers in just a moment, but first, here's Sarah from Careers New Zealand. Thanks, Clinton. Good, skilled truck drivers are really in demand, and it's a great career option as well, with plenty of opportunities for advancement. Now, everybody has skills, but how well do you know yours? Find out at knowyourskills.careers.govt.nz. Cool, thank you, Sarah. After the break, we're moving some big stuff with a big truck. Don't go away. We're going to join Nick Miller now as he discovers what it takes to become a skilled heavy haulage truck driver. 
Hi, I'm Nick. I'm year 12 at Rosemary College, and I'm interested in careers in the heavy haulage industry. The heavy haulage industry specialises in trucks and trailers designed to take loads that are heavier, longer, higher and wider than are allowed on standard vehicles. Driving these big rigs requires in-depth training and intensive experience, and Nick is going to gain a glimpse of these by spending a day with the drivers and trucks from long-established trucking firm Smith & Davies. G'day Nick. G'day Peter. How are you mate? Good. Thank you would you. like to learn something about heavy haulage driving? Yes I do. Oh, good, good. Peter good. Douglas good. is the company's heavy haulage manager. First up, he and Nick head off to Smith & Davies North Shore Yard where a 38 tonne digger is about to be taken on a 10k journey through the suburbs. What type of person makes a good driver? What does Smith & Davies look for in a person? Uh, we look for uh, people who are uh, conscientious. Um, of not only of themselves, but what's going on around them. And a um, person who can get on and do the job, a person who is willing to listen and learn at the same time. And uh, most of all, within the heavy haulage industry, they need to be able to uh, think outside the square a wee bit. At the yard, right, please, Peter introduces Nick to driver William, who is going to transport the digger later today. Nick, William. This is a Mercedes-Benz CD353, 530 horse. This Mercedes truck has many high-tech features, including the ability to widen the trailer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start the truck up, engage the PTO so we can widen the trailer. So if you want to jump up, I'll show you how to do that. PTO stands for Power Takeoff, a unit that diverts the engine power to the trailer's hydraulics. So now you can hear the PTO's engaged, now we can widen the trailer. So why do we widen the trailer? It's for its added stability for cornering and so you don't roll over basically. So at the moment the trailer's set at 2.5 which is standard legal road travel. So now it's Nick's job to widen the trailer far enough to take the digger. They initially expand the trailer out to 3.1 metres, which is the full width legally allowed without needing a pilot vehicle. Oh, yeah. The role of the pilot vehicle is basically to notify the members of the public that there's something big coming up behind the pilot wagon um, and um, basically to look after the other road users on the road at the same time as the load. Next they need to measure the digger to work oh, out no, whether please, that's please. going to be wide enough. Um, we'll just check the, check the width but as you can see the width isn't always the tracks. It's also, you've also got to look at the, the top half of the machine like the sidewalks and that are generally wider. So the tape measure will dictate whether they need a pilot vehicle. What's our width there, Nick? It's about 3,400. So that's 3.4. Yep. So with that width of 3.4, we'll need a, at least a Class 2 pilot. Back in the office, Peter's going to get Nick to plan the route. How are you finding it so far? It's great, thank you. Good, mate. OK, so next step now is um, we've got to do a route server. So we'll type in the address um, and destination and just keep in the back of your mind that the shortest route is not the always the best route for us. So we'll swap seats, let you go into it. So Nick takes the hot seat. And a few minutes later, he's worked out a route plan. But as Peter knows, while the journey looks OK on screen, the reality may be different. They need to check it out in person. And we've got to look for overhead structures, the signposts that's sticking out in the road, uh, the shape of the corners as such. And it's not long before Peter spots a major problem. This bridge. Um, as a, what we class as a do not go, so we're not allowed to bring any heavy weights over it. So we'll just stop and I'll explain to you why we can't cross this bridge. We've got up to 69 tonne at the moment transporting this machine. The bridge is only good for 44 tonne, so we have to now go back and find another route on how to get the machine to the destination. Back at the office, Peter helps Nick to work out a route that he's very familiar with and knows won't have any hazards. It's time to get the digger on the truck. The 38-tonne Hyundai is a massive piece of complex machinery that must be lined up precisely on the trailer to avoid disaster. But for William, it's all in a day's work. Really, really, I'm lucky because I started out as a young fellow on big machinery, so I've, I've done that uh, all my life. I've been around it, so I can jump, I can, and I can turn my hand to anything. So it is tricky, but yeah, with the right people showing you how to do it, it makes the job a lot easier and with day-to-day -day doing it all the time, you actually get better and better at operating the machines. With the load secure, they are ready to roll. Almost. OK, Nick, we're going to... The officers just emailed us a supplementary licence for the extra weight that we're carrying, over 42 tonne, so I'll just print it out on the printer over here. 
This wireless printing system saves the company time and money, allowing the drivers to spend less time chasing paper and more time at the wheel. And there it is. With the pilot vehicle stopping traffic in both directions, the big rig leaves the yard. Then they set off in a convoy with one pilot vehicle ahead and one behind. MITO, the New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation, works with the industry to develop fit for purpose and relevant qualifications for the road transport sector. Not many people get to do this every day. Nah, that's right. I don't think I could stand sitting in an office. Nah. This is my office, I suppose, but yeah, at least you get, you get to get outside. <laughs> Leaving the suburbs behind, they tackle the steep climb up the Albany Hill. Despite the terrible weather, there are no problems. Halfway through the journey comes the first major hazard. They are permitted to cross this bridge, but only in the centre. All clear to go, Willie. All clear to go. We're just looking for um, young people coming out of school, uh, male or female, doesn't matter. So if they get into the industry, it's just a satisfaction that they can do um, something that's a wee bit unique if it comes to heavy haulage. Um, you go from 10 ton machines up to, we, we can go up to 82 ton machines and it's just a challenge and personally satisfaction of getting the job done at the end of the day, safely without no minimal damage. So how is young Nick Dunn as a potential heavy haulage driver? He's not scared to get his hands dirty which is what we need in this industry and um, we hope to see him back one day as a truck driver carting machines around. MITO facilitates training for drivers in the heavy haulage industry, including the National Certificate in Heavy Haulage, Transportation and Class 1 Pilot. These programs are designed to teach the skills required to safely load and operate an over-dimensional vehicle and pilot vehicles. For more information, visit mito.org.nz. To find out more about the training opportunities and careers from this week's show, plus information about all the careers featured in this series, check out our program website, tvnz.co.nz slash justthejob, or simply Google Just The Job. So good luck, and I'll see you next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.